السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome to another episode from the Gems of the Heart where we try to check our hearts to make sure that it's clean and pure it's a duty that we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts it's an amazing creation of Allah and we need to keep on being reminded with this that this heart is owned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's the container of all kinds of things that we expose it to whether it's good or bad and it's our duty our job on the face of earth to make sure that we clean it from all kinds of impurities it doesn't have to be physical impurities it's the things that are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ that it's impure matters of disbelief matters of deviant beliefs and that's the most important thing matters of belief to be protected from all evil and deviant beliefs and the same thing when it comes to sins sins affect the hearts directly and contaminate the hearts and that's why our job is to clean our hearts from anything that contaminated and to bring into our hearts all kinds of purity and adornment in it which is al-iman faith and good deeds and the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Quran and so on so it's a job that has to be done and for anything that we do in matters of religion knowledge comes before action we have to know first and then we apply what we know this religion is based on wahi revelation clear revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not based on people's opinions and likings and so on it's revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's all there in the Quran and in the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, and that's what we're trying to do to focus more into the hearts and how can we purify our hearts from the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام. and we're still in the first and the most important thing ever and that is matters of belief especially the belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's the real purification of our hearts and our souls is to have the proper belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in all of the pillars of Iman of course and we talked about the rububiyyah of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of all things and we need to understand what that means He's the creator, the sustainer, the owner of all things and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship and that's the message of all the messengers of Allah to believe in that and to have the proper belief in this and to purify our hearts from shirk and we talked about that in details that to purify our hearts from anything that to do with associating partners with Allah and also with regards to the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have to have the proper belief in the names and attributes of Allah and there are so many in the Quran and in the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, to know the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is important of course to purify our hearts but we have to have the proper understanding, the proper uh, creed, the proper belief with regards to the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we heard many, many times before that the verse in the Quran, لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِ شَيْءُ وَالسَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ Nothing is the like of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He's the all-healer, the all-seer. We believe in everything mentioned in the Quran with regards to the names and attributes of Allah. We know the meaning of it. We don't distort the meanings of it. We don't distort it. We don't deny it. We don't alter it. We keep it the way it is and we do not even think of how things are because we do not have this information. It's not in the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to distort the meaning and change the meanings as some deviants, they did that. And we talked about many of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But inshallah ta'ala in this episode, we want to talk about something that is uh, present in many verses in the Quran and it's one of the source of goodness and uh, happiness in our life that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us with the believers and this is something mentioned in the Quran and we'll see in many verses in the Quran that talks about this but it's a slippery subject if people do not understand the proper belief in it because some people they 
kind of denied some of these verses when it comes to its understanding. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wa huwa ma'akum aina ma kuntum, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you wherever you are, we need to have the proper understanding of what that means. And this is a matter of belief. And then we need to be affected by this. We need to purify our hearts with these types of meanings. So let's go through some of the verses that talks about this. It's, it's usually the ulama, they talk about it as the pronoun of the word, which is ma'iyatullah, uh, which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being with his creation. What does that mean? And this is something that we can see in the light of the verses in the Qur'an to explain the verses in the Qur'an according to the Qur'an and to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and the companions of the Allah. So let's uh, talk about this subject since Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it in the Qur'an and that's one of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to purify our hearts and how to make uh, this matter something present in our life. How to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with us uh, with his uh, support and victory and so on. The Sma'iyya or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being with his creation is of two types. The verses and as we will see inshallah ta'ala in the Quran are of two types. Uh, the first type, the verses that talks about the general term of what that means. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with his creation. The believers and the disbelievers and everyone wherever they are. Meaning with his knowledge subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his power subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the all hearer, the all seer. Because we know that the Quran stated that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ar-Rahmanu al-Arsh istawa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he rose over his throne so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his creation and nothing is the like of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but when it comes to these verses that talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being with his creation meaning as the ijma' or the consensus of the early generations of Islam they refer to this with the meaning of it which is it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with his creation with his knowledge with his power and that's also linguistically is absolutely correct and this is something that a person would say in language and it doesn't mean that being with that means to become one uh, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is over his creation but he is with his creation with his power with his knowledge and so on and so forth for example and if we go from you know not the entire verses in the Quran that talks about the subject but some of them the general ma'iyya, the general being with, that is mentioned in the Qur'an. If we look, for example, and we need to really pay attention, and I'm asking uh, you, the viewers, inshallah ta'ala, to pay attention to what we are going to say. This is a matter of belief. It's a very serious matter. And we need to pay attention to what the verses says and to listen to the explanation of it so that we don't get distorted understanding in matters of aqidah. Uh, in the beginning of orders and the verses in the Qur'an, in Surah An-Nisa, Surah An-Nisa and we'll have inshallah the verses for you uh, on the screen so that you can see it. Verse number 108, verse number 108 in Surah An-Nisa. As you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَسْتَخْفُونَ مِنَ النَّاسِ وَلَا يَسْتَخْفُونَ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَهُوَ مَعَهُمْ إِذْ يُبَيِّتُونَ مَا لَا يَرْضَى مِنَ الْقَوْلِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ بِمَا يَعْمَلُونَ مُحِيطًا Which means they conceal their evil intentions and deeds and so on from the people but they cannot conceal them from Allah and he is with them when they spend the, the night in such as he does not accept of speech and ever is Allah of what they do encompassing so the verses here is saying that it's talking about uh, the, the hypocrites mainly that they think that they conceal what's inside of their hearts you know, the hypocrites, they have disbelief inside of the hearts and they show something else, belief in front of the people. So they're concealing these types of evil deeds from the people. But they cannot conceal it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the hearts and what we say and what our actions and so on. But then the verse says, وَهُوَ مَعَهُمْ إِذْ يُبَيِّتُونَ مَا لَا يَرْضَى مِنَ الْقَوْلِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them when they would spend the night in such as he does not accept of speech they spend the night in the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with from their speech so the point here in the verse wa huwa ma'ahum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them what does it mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them this is the general uh, being with uh, which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them with his knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best what they are doing and that's very clearly in the context is showing this wa huwa ma'ahum as you see here, that means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them with his knowledge subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is again the explanation of 
the consensus of Salaf Salih, the early generations of Al Islam. This particular meaning, when it comes to the meaning of He is with them with His knowledge, is clearly mentioned in the next verse that we will see, inshallah ta'ala, clearly in the context. So again, it means that He is with them with His knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala, in a way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing is the like of Him. If we look into another verse, that states it clearly in the context is very clear which shows the meaning of knowledge there this is in surah al-hadid verse number four in surah al-hadid verse number four allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says huwa alladhi khalaqa as-samawati wal-arda fi sittati ayyamin thumma istawa ala al-arsh ya'lamu ma yaliju fi al-ardi wa ma yakhruju minha wa ma yanzilu min as-samai wa ma ya'ruju fiha wa huwa ma'akum aynama kuntum Wallahu bima ta'maluna basir. So roughly means it is he who created the heavens and the earth in six days and then established himself above the throne. He knows what penetrates into the earth and what emerges from it and what descends from the heaven and what ascends therein. And he is with you wherever you are. And Allah of what you do is seeing. And that's the point here. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ Which means and he is with you wherever you are. وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ if we look in the verse, right, and if you know the, 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 the language here, it's very clear because it says right above وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ It says يَعْلَمُ مَا يَلِجُ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَعْلَم means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. He has the knowledge of what penetrates into the earth وَمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا and what emerges from it. So the knowledge is mentioned here. وَمَا يَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ and what comes down from the skies وَمَا يَعْرُجُ فِيهَا and what uh, goes up uh, from uh, you know in it and so on وَهُوَ مَعَكُمْ أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُمْ which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you wherever you are so this is it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you with his knowledge subhanahu wa ta'ala and this ma'iya or being with it's a reality this is exactly what it's mentioned without ambiguity without distorting the meanings of it whatsoever because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nothing is the like of him and he's the al-hira the al-seer subhanahu wa ta'ala so this is the general ma'iyah that everybody, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is with, with these meanings. That nobody can escape the power of Allah. Nobody can do anything without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knowing what they're doing. Because He's the creator of the heavens and earth. And that's, of course, that there's great implications to this. Well, it brings the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our hearts. And that's the purification of our hearts. When a person knows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with him no matter what he does. Meaning that with his knowledge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the person. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing what the person is doing. It doesn't matter how many people on the face of earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them, with his knowledge, with his power. That he is the all-seer, the all-hearer, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, we will have shyness from Allah. And that's a deed done by the heart. To be conscious of this, to have the fear of Allah. That the sins to the believers... It's not going to be just when they're exposed or when they're in front of people. It's always going to be a person would stay away from sins even when he's alone. A person would even push away the evil thoughts from the heart because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in our hearts. Sometimes a person is overpowered by something in his heart, a thought that comes into one's heart. And we're not questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these types of whims. But we have a duty to push it away from ourselves. And it's sufficient enough to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in our hearts. As the Prophet والسلام, he said, In Allah la yanzuru ila suwarikum wala ila ajisamikum, walakin yanzuru ila kulubikum wa a'malikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your bodies and your stature, your outside appearance, but rather he looks at your hearts and your deeds. So if we, know, if we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks into our hearts, we would make sure that our hearts are clean, that our hearts have the exaltation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we seek the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, that we're sincere and so on. And also, we can deceive people very easily, but we cannot deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So to have this proper belief, this is something that is essential for the believers, and we need to really uh, witness that in our life. Another verse I would like to also to uh, get your attention to, uh, and that's the last example in this general ma'iyya, the general uh, being with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with his creation, with his knowledge, with his power subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And this is in Surah Al-Mujadala, verse number 7, which also clearly shows the context in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَلَمْ تَرَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ مَا يَكُونُ مِنْ نَجْوَى ثَلَاثَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ رَابِعُهُمْ وَلَا خَمْسَةٍ إِلَّا هُوَ سَادِسُهُمْ وَلَا أَدْنَى مِنْ ذَلِكَ وَلَا أَكْثَرَ إِلَّا هُوَ مَعْهُمْ أَيْنَ مَا كَانُ ثُمَّ يُنَبِّئُهُمْ بِمَا عَمِلُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ The entire verse is about the knowledge of Allah. If we see the translation, one word after another, we see that it means, have you not considered that Allah knows what's in the heavens and what's on, it's on the earth? There is no private conversation, three, but that he is the fourth of them. Nor are there five, but that he is the sixth of them. And no less than that, and no more, except that he is with them wherever they are. Then he will inform them of what they did on the day of resurrection. Indeed, Allah is of all things knowing. So see, the verse is talking about the knowledge of Allah. He knows what's in the heavens and what's in the earth. Even when people are having secret talks, if there are three, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their fourth. And if there are five, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their sixth. Right? And there's no less or more, right? So no, no, nobody would say only these numbers. No. Even if it's less than that if, or more than that, إِلَّا هُوَ مَعَهُمْ أَيْنَمَا كَانُوا Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them wherever they are. And He will inform them in the Day of Judgment what they used to say and what they used to do. Because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٍ He is subhanahu wa ta'ala of all things knowing. So the verse starts with the knowledge of Allah, that He knows what's in the heavens and the earth. So that why when people are talking secret to one another, and the disbelievers, they used to do that at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, plotting. And the same thing for the disbelievers or the plotters at all times, when they plot against the religion of Islam, when they plot against the believers. And nobody knows their conspiracies and their plottings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if there are three, He is their fourth. If there are five, He is their sixth. If there are more than that, he's with them. If there are less, he's with them. With his knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is above his creation. He knows exactly what they are saying, what they are plotting. And more than that is, they will be informed of this in the Day of Judgment. And more even as it's mentioned in the Quran, that their plots will go around and come against them. They will be seized by the same plot that they make against the, the believers and so on. So the context is very clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with his creation, with his knowledge, subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his power. Nobody can escape the sovereignty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And again, this ma'iyya, so that we are always consistent, it's something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And he subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing is the like of him. So we have to believe in it. We should not deny it. We should not say something else, right? Because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Qur'an. And that's why that, that brings great benefits, of course, in the hearts as we heard. And therefore, a person, when he understands this, he will be, if he have these great characteristics, to understand and to be conscious that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with us at all times, with his knowledge, with his power, subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that would bring great meanings in our lives, in our hearts, in our actions. And then, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person become among those who receive the special ma'iyya of Allah, the special meaning of being Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the person. So it's for the believers, it's more than just being with them with his knowledge and power, it's more for the believers. What does that mean? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the believers, with his mercy, with his power and knowledge of course, with his support, that he aid them, give them victory, give them steadfastness, and so on and so forth. And this is also mentioned in many verses in the Qur'an. If we start from Surah Al-Baqarah and we'll see some of the examples here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 153, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladhina amanu sta'inu bil sabri wa salah, inna allaha ma'a sabirin. Which means, O you who believe, sta'inu bil sabri wa salah, seek help, through patience and prayer, salah. Indeed, Allah is with the patient. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Allah ma'a sabirin, with the patient. What does that mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the patients? Is it more meaning than what has been mentioned before? Definitely. 
This is the ma'iyya or being with them with his help and support and guidance, right? And that's why when a person is patient with patience and salah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the mean to be able to achieve anything in our life of goodness. If we see that we are weak, and we are weak, and a person wants to be steadfast on the deen of Allah. Many of us when we complain and we say that we want to be righteous, we want to be steadfast on the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, but we feel weak, we feel pressured by others, we feel that we were not able to fulfill certain deeds and so on, anything whether it's salah or fasting or anything, or being away from sins and so on. This verse is, is a key and it's a cure. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling the believers to seek help in two things, in patience, and in salah, be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make things easy for you, would make it matter that you can fulfill whatever you want by the will of Allah. And in salah, make salah, increase your, your salah, and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in salah. Because indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'as sabirin. And who would not want to be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with him? And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with someone, meaning his support, his help, his victory, and so on, why do, you, why do we care about anything else, about anyone else, right? And this is something that some of the early generations of Islam used to say. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with you on your side to help you and so on, why you're sad? Why you fear anyone? And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is against you, who can protect you? Who can support you? No one, right? And this is basically what a believer, they always seek because once they have this in them, in their lives, they don't care about anything else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala suffice for them. Right? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we look into another verse, so now we learn that to be patient, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with us. And when we're patient, that's an act of worship. To be patient, to do the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be patient, to be away from sins, to be patient with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decree for us. This is the way for the person to have the ma'iyya or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with the person. We need this at times of weakness. We need this with every breath we take. We need the matter of guidance to be steadfast. At the moment of death for the person to say La ilaha illallah in the grave to give us the steadfastness to answer the questions that everybody will be asked about in the grave. Man man rajul Who's your Lord? What is your religion? Who's the man that has been sent you know, to you? The answer has to be Allah and the religion is Al-Islam and the man is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We know it in this life, but we need the steadfastness that when it's present in the heart and the steadfastness come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ma'as sabirin with those who are patient. We need to be patient with the deen of Allah. Another example, and of course because of the program, we're not able, able even to uh, cover all of these uh, verses in the Quran, but it's important to understand and to see the effect of it with the proper belief as we heard, of course. In Surah Al-Baqarah, still, in verse number 194, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الشهر الحرام بالشهر الحرام والحرمات قصاص فمن اعتدى عليكم فاعتدوا عليه بمثل ما اعتدى عليكم واتقوا الله واعلموا أن الله مع المتقين which means fighting in the sacred month is for aggression committed in the, in the sacred month that means as a retaliation for an aggression and for all violations is legal retribution so whoever has assaulted you then assault him in the same way that he has assaulted you and fear Allah and know that Allah is with those who fear him. First of all, briefly, this is within the context of war where the sacred months, the four sacred months, it's forbidden for the believers to fight in them. But if someone uh, have a, an act of aggression, then to, to protect themselves. And for the individuals, of course, matters should be referred to the people of authority. But here the point of the verse here, وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهِ that means fear Allah, be dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُتَّقِينَ And know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the muttaqeen. The verse clearly, it basically encouraging us to be among the people of taqwa. It's a beautiful way. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's the most beautiful subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's the most merciful. That he's encouraging the people of taqwa, the people of iman, to fear Allah and to be dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And to encourage them by telling them and making them know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them if they have taqwa. What a better way to say this, right? If, if we are told that Allah is with you, if a person goes to some path that is so dark and has so much fearful things and so on, 
he might be scared. But if that person would say, uh, someone would say to him that we'll send a force with you, army with you, to protect you while you're crossing this path or so, he will be comfortable, he will be content, right? And these are all human beings. They cannot protect even their own selves. So imagine when we hear in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the muttaqeen. Is there anything else more that we need to know that would make us among the muttaqeen? We should take all the means. We should flee to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The concern here would be for a believer reflecting uh, upon these verses is to know how can I be among the muttaqeen? What is the characteristics of the muttaqeen? How can I be one of them? This is the concern that should be there. Why? Because we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's promise is truth. And he said, anna Allah Know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the muttaqeen. And this ma'iyya, this being with, means that Allah is with them to support them, to help them, to keep them being in the level of taqwa and so on. We'll talk about more inshallah ta'ala of these meanings right after the break. So stay with us inshallah. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. Welcome back. And with the subject, a great subject, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with his creation, with his knowledge, with his power, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and with the believers, with more than that, and that is being with them, with victory, with steadfastness, to give them steadfastness, to guide them. But these believers, with their characteristics, and that's very important for us to remember. We heard that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna Allah ma'as sabirin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who are patient, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ma'al muttaqeen, with the people of taqwa, right? And this is all encouragement for us. And it, it's really, it's shameful. Let me say it like this. It's shameful that when we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the sabirin, with the muttaqeen, we see more. And a person still would not want to fulfill these characteristics. So that's why we need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to have shyness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have the, the good expectations and the strong belief in the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another example of this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about Bani Israel, the nation before the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse number 12. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that he's with them but with a condition. As it says, وَلَقَدْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلِ وَبَعَثْنَا مِنْهُمْ وَثْنَيْ عَشَرَ نَقِيبًا فقال الله إني معكم لئن أقمتم الصلاة وآتيتم الزكاة وآمنتم برسلي وعزرتموهم وأقرضتم الله قرضا حسنا لأكفرن عنكم سيئاتكم ولأدخلنكم جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار فمن كفر بعد ذلك منكم فقد ضل سواء السبيل which roughly means and Allah has already taken a covenant from the children of Israel and we delegated from among them 12 leaders. And Allah said, I am with you if you establish prayer and give zakah and believe in my messengers and support them and loan Allah a goodly loan, I will surely remove from you your misdeeds and admit you to gardens beneath which rivers flow. But whoever of you disbelieves after that has certainly strayed from the soundness of the way. <coughs> we see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, bestowed his favor upon Bani Israel. But then he said, وَقَالَ اللَّهُ إِنِّي مَعَكُمْ And that's the shahid. This is why we have this verse here. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to them uh, that he is with them. Meaning with them to give them victory, to aid them, to support them and so on. But with what's mentioned afterwards. لَإِنْ أَقَمْتُمُ الصَّلَةِ Right? That he is with them if they establish the salah, if they pay the zakah, if they believe in the messengers of Allah, and so on and so forth. So therefore, whenever they broke the covenant between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cursed them. There is no special uh, thing for anybody on the face of earth except the ubudiyah to Allah. There is no race on the face of earth that is to be chosen. There is no people because of an action that they did in the past or because whatever they did, they become chosen forever. There's no such a thing. It's the human beings according to their actions. If, if someone is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will choose them to be among the blessed ones. But if they break, break the covenant between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are cursed. And this is how human beings are human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even warned 
everyone inclu including the believers a person can be a believer and so on and then he changes if he changes then he is basically uh, what comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala changes also for him so this ma'iyya or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being with the believers with their help and support and strength and so on is as long as they are believers as long as they have patience and taqwa and they're obedient to Allah and establish the salah and so on and so forth another example and there are so many of them but it's it's a good thing for us to be reminded of these good meanings that we need to really achieve in our lives because we are in need that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us when we see the situation of the ummah today Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the believers but when they are being tested because they turned away from the source of guidance for them and we need to ask ourselves are, are the Muslims today among the patient ones are they among the people of taqwa fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dutiful to Allah in general like this are the Muslims today the ones that would establish the salah and give the zakah you know there are sins present and that's why this ma'iyya or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being with them with his with his ta'eed and, and victory and support and so on become less according to how much they are away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala another example in surah al-anfal verse number 12 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِذْ يُوحِي رَبُّكَ إِلَى الْمَلَائِكَةِ أَنِّي مَعَكُمْ فَثَبِّتُوا الَّذِينَ أَمَنُوا سَأُلْقِي فِي قُلُوبِ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا الرُّعْبَ فَاضْرِبُوا فَوْقَ الْأَعْنَاقِ وَاضْرِبُوا مِنْهُمْ كُلَّ بَنَانٍ Remember when your Lord inspired to the angels, I am with you. So strengthen those who have believed, I will cast terror into the hearts of those who disbelieved. So strike them upon the necks and strike from them every fingertip. This is in the war. At the time of the Prophet ﷺ, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aided the Prophet ﷺ in his battle of Badr by the angels. And the Prophet ﷺ and his companions were 300 and something verses, almost 1,000 of the disbelievers. So the point here is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to the angels, Anni ma'akum, I'm with you. The angels, they physically came down and they held the Prophet ﷺ. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was with them with his support and help subhanahu wa ta'ala and nobody can defeat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can oppose the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, why that happened? Because the Prophet والسلام, because of the companions of Allah anhum, they were obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they were doing things for the sake of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was with them. This ma'iyya again being with them with his support, with his help, with his, with his power, subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his mercy, and so on. And this is mentioned in the Qur'an in the same meaning of the, the physical strength that the believers would receive, and so on. And therefore, for a person to be more obedient to Allah, the more physical strength that a person would receive to be obedient to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. As, for example, in the same surah, Surah Al-Anfal, verse number 19, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِن تَسْتَفْتِحُوا فَقَدْ جَاءَكُمُ الْفَتْحِ وَإِن تَنْتَهُوا فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَإِن تَعُودُوا نَعُدْ وَلَنْ تُغْنِي عَنْكُمْ فِئَتُكُمْ شَيْئًا وَلَوْ كَثُرَتْ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And this is for the disbelievers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying if you, meaning the disbelievers, seek the victory, the defeat has come to you. And if you desist from the hostilities, it is best for you. But if you return to war, we will return and never will you be ava availed by your large company at all, even if it should increase. And that is because Allah is with the believers. Such a clear statement and warning for the disbelievers when they fought the Prophet والسلام, that no matter what they do, they come back if they have, have much larger uh, armies and more equipped and so on, all of that would never benefit them. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as it's mentioned at the end of the verse, وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the believers. And this is such an amazing one. And that's why you see, if you see right, right after that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling the believers, يَا أَيُّوَ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ وَلَا تَوَلَّوْا عَنْهُ وَأَنْتُمْ تَسْمَعُونَ Oh, who believe, obey Allah and His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم. And don't turn away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're listening. وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ قَالُوا سَمِعْنَا وَهُمْ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ And don't be among those who said that we listen but they don't really listen. So this is the key basically for the believers to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with them. But to just have wishful thinking, it doesn't work this way. And that's why it's when people say why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not with 
uh, the Muslims nowadays to support them, to help them, and so on. The matter is explained clearly in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the believers, those who are obedient to Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah knows best what is best because He is the most wise subhanahu wa ta'ala. If a person says, but the disbelievers and so on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them so much in this life and they are disbelievers and we're talking about believers and they're not being supported see this is something that shows the misunderstanding why? because the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth is in such a way that those who say la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah their test is different than the test of the disbelievers the disbelievers their jannah their uh, basically paradise is on the face of earth and even with that they have pain and they suffer and so on but their affairs is according to how strong or weak the believers are. So if the believers are weak, that means, meaning in matters of Iman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send others against them. Right? So this is by the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then the final destination for the disbelievers is basically the hellfire. But for the believers, even though they are tested and they suffer and so on in the face of earth, but their final destination is the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying clearly that he is with the believers if they are obedient to Allah and his messenger وسلم, and warning them not to turn away and that's why we as Muslims we should make it very clear in our life we سَمِعْنَا وَأَطَعْنَا we listen and we obey and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the believers as we see the challenge in the verse no matter how much the disbelievers they have that doesn't really matter at the end what matters really what makes the believers worry about is not the strength of the disbelievers but rather what this fact is that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with us because we fulfilled our iman and our faith and our obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we don't then we should really repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why the companions radiallahu anhum whenever they would go to different uh, wars and so on the most thing that they fear is not their enemies it's their own selves their own sins, their own shortcomings. That's what they fear the most. Why? Because they understood the Quran very well. And they know that the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nobody can ever change it. And they know that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them, they will be victorious. And because of their sins, you know, things will happen different than what they desire. So this is clear. Uh, and another example, because of the time, we might even continue next time, inshallah ta'ala, with these great examples that brings so much purification to our hearts. And it shows the, the right char characteristics that we need to have so that we receive these great blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for someone to have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with him on his side, uh, to support him, to help him, to give him steadfastness. One of which in Surah uh, Tawbah, for example, in the same context of uh, the wars and the defeat from the disbelievers and so on and vice versa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Tawbah, verse number 40, إِلَّا تَنْصُرُوهُ فَقَدْ نَصَرَهُ اللَّهُ إِذْ أَخْرَجَهُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا ثَانِيَ اثْنَيْنِ إِذْ هُمَا فِي الْغَارِ إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا فَأَنْزَلَ اللَّهُ سَكِينَتَهُ عَلَيْهِ وَأَيَّدَهُ بِجُنُودٍ لَمْ تَرَوْهَا وَجَعَلَ كَلِمَةَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا السُّفْلَى وَكَلِمَةُ اللَّهِ هِيَ الْعُلْيَا وَاللَّهُ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ Which means if you do not aid the Prophet وسلم, Allah has already aided him and gave him victory when those who disbelieved had driven him out of Mecca as one of two when they were in the cave and he said to his companion do not grieve indeed Allah is with us and Allah sent down his tranquility upon him and supported him with angels you did not see and made the word of those who disbelieved, disbelieved the lowest while the word of Allah that is the highest and Allah is exalted in might and wise so the point in the verse here is that the Prophet Sallallahu what did he say to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu when he was with the Prophet Sallallahu in the cave when Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu said to the Prophet Sallallahu when the disbelievers are right there outside the opening of the cave he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Abu Bakr he said to him if they one of them would look at his feet he would see us that's how close they were to the disbelievers and the disbelievers were going after them to kill them. And the great prize have been announced for the killing of the Prophet ﷺ and his companion Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu did not care about his own life. He cared about the life of the Prophet ﷺ. So when the Prophet ﷺ saw that grieve 
or sadness in Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu that he was so afraid that the disbelievers will see them the Prophet وسلم, said to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu to give him strength لا تحزن إن الله معنا do not grieve indeed Allah is with us it's mentioned in the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, that the Prophet وسلم, said to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu يا أبا بكر و أبو بكر what do you think of two Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their third what do you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do for them if there are two Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their third would anybody be able to defeat them would anybody would be able to cause harm to them you know not just even two verses ten or hundred of, or thousand from the disbelievers if it's the entire humanity comes against someone they can never harm that person unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will for that to happen and if in the entire humanity come together to try to benefit someone with anything they won't be able to benefit that person except if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will for that to happen as it's mentioned the hadith of Ibn Abbas clearly so therefore again going back to what is our concern in all of this the concern is is to be among those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with with his uh, power with his strength with his victory with his mercy with the rewards with all of this and not to be concerned about other things that human beings are concerned about as it's mentioned clearly this in this verse see how the Prophet ﷺ is comforting Abu Bakr عن, he says لا تحزن إن الله معنا. do not be in state of grief because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed he's with us and as a result of that the tranquility came down in their hearts and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aided them and so on we can take one last verse today inshallah ta'ala and we continue inshallah next time also shows some of these characteristics and we need to expand even on these characteristics but maybe inshallah ta'ala later on because we're still in the part of matters of belief that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah al-nahl for example verse number 128 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the end of the surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who fear him those who are people of taqwa and those who are doers of good Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with them you know if we see the entire surah it's about the favors of Allah the many favors of Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed on everyone and also unto the believers and if you see the verse right before that وَاصْبِرْ وَمَا صَبُرُكَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ وَلَا تَحْزَنْ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا تَكُوْ فِي ضَيْقٍ مِمَّا يَمْكُرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the Prophet sallallahu be patient and your patience it's nothing except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's by the help of Allah and don't grieve of what they are doing to you or what they're saying and so on right and why why all of this because indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those who have taqwa and those who are muhsinun those who are good doers so again this is the concern is to be among the people of taqwa what is taqwa to obey Allah to fear Allah to purify ourselves from sins and to be among the muhsineen those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if they see Allah and if they don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing them so when people have these characteristics Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with them the same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was with the Prophet وسلم, with the companions عنهم, and he aided them and gave them victory and so on Therefore, going back again to the subject of belief, this ma'iyah or being with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with all of his creation, with his power, with his knowledge subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is with the believers, with the knowledge and the power and also to aid them, to support them, to have mercy on them, to give them reward. Right? Therefore, the believers, they fear nobody but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. They flee to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the benefit of understanding these types of meaning without distorting any of the attributes of Allah. So this is a real ma'iyah. Being with, that means being with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And this is with the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the power of Allah, with the, the victory from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the steadfastness and so on. Even for a person, and that's what we need to purify ourselves with the tawheed of Allah. If a person, if you want to make salah, we won't be able to do it on our own. There are many smart people on the face of earth, but they are deviated from the truth. So guidance is in the hands of Allah. So a person would seek help from Allah. Would say, La hawla wa la illa billah. There is no might and there is no power except by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
We hear that, they hear, we say that when we hear the Mu'adhin saying, Hayya ala salah, Hayya ala falah. Come to the salah, come to the, your success. We say, La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. We seek help from Allah. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of all things. And we need this ma'iyya. We need that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be with us. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with someone, then no fear for that person. Nor he shall, shall grieve. He should be rejoicing and so on. But the fact is that we do not know this till we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we know what we need to do so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us. Meaning we know that in the Quran, in the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, to fulfill these characteristics. As we heard tonight, we heard some of these characteristics. We heard the characteristics of patient, to be patient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with you. And this is the characteristics of the believers. To have the taqwa of Allah, to, to have the fear of Allah, to be dutiful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the believers to fulfill al-iman, to complete our iman. Sins weakens matters of al-iman, to be among the believers, to be among those who have taqwa, those who are good doers, to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with goodness and so on and so forth, knowingly that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the believers like that and to have the fear of Allah in our hearts, that he is with us with his knowledge. He knows exactly what we do and what we say and what we think about and so on. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the proper understanding, to purify our hearts, to make us among the believers, to make us among those who follow the sunnah the way the Prophet والسلام, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with us in our times, in our moment of death, and in, in the graves, to support us, to give us steadfastness, to make us among those who receive the glad tidings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa sallamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh.